Hello everyone, welcome to our talk. So the topic of this video is NIW Green Card Detailed Explanation of USCIS Standard. Well, this video is intended for the audience who is currently applying NIW Green Card or considering to apply NIW Green Card, or those who want to know more about specific information and the requirements about NIW. This video is also for those who have received, for example, request for evidence, or so-called RFE, or notice of intention to deny from the USCIS, and then wants to know more. NIW is a great way to obtain US green card. Well, it does not require employer sponsorship. And for most applicants, there's no waiting time if you apply NIW green card. Well, you can get your green card through NIW faster than EB1 and term green card. Second, well, there is no specific requirements on your major or your background. You can be, for example, a scientist, a researcher, or a medical doctor, a physician, or an engineer, an artist, or a business person, an entrepreneur, or someone who has special talent, for example, in investment, finance, or cultural activities. We have obtained NIW approvals for people with all kinds of background and you can apply from outside of the U.S. by yourself. Third, well, in our opinion, based on our experience and observation, the requirements and the standard for NIW is relatively clear and specific, making it relatively easy to prepare an NIW application and obtain approval, especially after the new standard matter of the NASA was published in December 2016. There are the three prongs. In comparison, for example, uh, the EB1 standard is more arbitrary and sometimes unclear, while making there more uncertainty for EB1 application. And finally, well, some applicants, they are nervous, anxious after they receive the IFE or NOID from the USCIS. They want to know what additional materials, additional evidence will be needed in order to satisfy the requirements from USCIS and get their case approved. We want to emphasize here that the application documents do not have to be very long and you may not need many additional recommendation letters. The quality is more important than quantity and too many files may actually have negative impact to your case. For example, you, know, you do not want to hide the most important, the most critical information in the jungle of miscellaneous documents. Based on abundant materials from the USCIS that we received well, from the immigration officers, also based on our many approved NIW cases, let's look at the detailed requirements for NIW. First, the applicants should have advanced degree or some alternative. Well, the advanced degree does not have to be PhD. Master's degree is fine. And if you are a PhD candidate, you may not need to actually receive the diploma. Well, I myself applied my own NIW before PhD graduation when I was a student, and I did not have master's degree at that time. And my case was approved. Many co-workers in our law firm have PhD degrees in science and research experience. We can help you emphasize your strong points in the NIW application. If your diploma is in foreign language, you need a certified translation or notarization. Alternatively, you can have bachelor's degree plus five year of progressive experience, or you have exceptional ability to qualify NIW. And next, let's go over the three prongs for NIW. Let's go into details to see what the USCIS exactly wants to see under matter of the NASA for NIW. The first problem is the petitioner's proposed endeavor should have both substantial merit and national importance. So what does that mean? Well, the applicant's background can be business, entrepreneurship, science, technology, culture, health, education, etc. However, in each of the situations, the applicant should provide a detailed description of the endeavor and why it has substantial merit. This is important. The USCIS will consider the endeavor's potential 
prospective impact, not your past. That's the general requirement. And now let's see the details on how to fulfill the requirement. Remember, well, the intention is not enough by itself. You need more details, specifics to explain. And don't just focus on the past performance and the products of research. Past works need to be connected with current and upcoming endeavors. The USCIS cannot grant NIW solely based on your past performance or general merit of ability. You need to provide a specific plan on how the petitioner desires to continue. For example, conducting research in his or her field of expertise. What the petitioner intends to do, why it matters, who are interested, and how the petitioner will perform the plan. Don't mix the merit on national interest with the merit of petitioner's own personal background. You need to provide sufficient evidence, including supporting documentary, objective evidence on the substantial merit of proposed endeavor. And the claims made by recommendation letter outlining why an endeavor has substantial merit must be supported by independent and objective evidence documentary evidence for that claim. The application package does not have to reveal and cover all of your previous achievements. Just emphasize the part that can be linked to your proposed endeavor. Now, the second problem is petitioner is well positioned to execute and advance the proposed endeavor. Well, this problem shifts the focus from proposed endeavor, the background, field, area, project, to the individual, the petitioner for NIW, who is also the beneficiary. The USCIS for this problem will consider the following factors, including the individual's education, skills, knowledge, and the record of success in related or similar efforts, and uh, a model or plan for future activity, and any progress towards achieving the proposed endeavor. Finally, the interest of potential customers, peers, users, investors, or relevant entities and individuals to see how the plan has value in their eyes, how they recognize the importance of the plan, and how they may have implemented them. To meet this requirement, first, you need to define a specific endeavor. Well, that's something we just discussed in the first problem. The importance of describing your proposed endeavor well, cannot be overemphasized. And then how do you show you are well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor? Well, for example, uh, the petitioner has advanced degree and past success in research. The petitioner has made prior achievements and plans to continue the effort. The petitioner's work has been cited by other members, by peers in the field. And the petitioner's work has drawn interest of others in the study. Well, all these can help to fulfill the requirement. For example, you as the applicant may have research works published in professional journals, which can demonstrate the progress and recognition. And the publication sites may, be, have, may have been cited by peers worldwide. Petitioner's specialized research may have been followed and discussed by scientists and uh, medical practitioners to show the practical application and the implementation. As we know, the second problem is the critical part. There are some common problems identified by the USCIS, by the immigration officers. And here we briefly discuss some of those. For example, petitioners have made claims that are unsubstantiated by the evidence. So you need to have support, objective evidence. And for example, all points rest on testimonials provided by affidavits in letters, where the beneficiary's research history and how it has been regarded by scientific community. Now, this by itself does not draw to conclusion that the interest is generated in beneficiary's work. You need other, more objective evidence. Also, for example, the application package covered multiple research topics, including the topics and the projects that were done by the petition, but are not directly related 
to the proposed endeavor. Uh, they may be unnecessary or even harmful. For another example, petitioner may be a medical resident doctor or a postdoc researcher or even a PhD student. The immigration officer may allege that petitioner is still in the training stage, training phase of the career. And so the experience and the tenure in the field of proposed endeavor is not so much. There is relatively little experience on the research when compared to other professionals in the field. Well, how to deal with this? How to address this question? Well, it's case by case. You can contact us for more information. And some of my co-workers in our law firm, uh, they applied green card while they are postdocs. So the issue definitely can be addressed and it's case by case. Also, we have PhD degrees in science and we have research experience. We have our own publications with the citations. We can understand your research work. These are our advantages. As we can see, the second prompt focus on whether the petitioner is well positioned and this can be a tricky part. This is the critical prompt for the NIW approval. So you need to focus, emphasize on this and check what we just discussed for more details. Then there's the third problem, uh, which is on balance, it would be in the national interest to waive the labor certification requirement. Here, the USCIS has said that the third point in this NASA framework may be thought of as a summary problem. USCIS has said the third point in the NASA framework may be thought of as a summary problem rather than one that stands on its own entirely. If the first two prongs are satisfied, it is generally likely that the third prong may be satisfied in the course of a determination as well. However, the USCIS has also said that this does not alleviate the petitioner from addressing this point and making a specific case for how to grant the waiver would be justified that on balance the third prong is met. Well, there are several ways. For example, we can explain why the petitioner would not be able to seek a labor certification or why a certification is impractical given the beneficiary's specific situation. And the most commonly, we use this explanation that the U.S. would still benefit from the petitioner's contributions, even assuming that workers are available because uh, if we compare the petitioner with others on the job market, well, we can decide that more individuals with exceptional ability can eventually benefit U.S. national interest. Okay. Uh, this is the most commonly used explanation, but we need to further explain how this is achieved. Some common problems include, for example, uh, application documents show there are experts professors in my field, they have expressed their expectation that future research will be impactful to my field uh, made by the petitioner. However, this may be uncorroborated by evidence. We need, again, objective evidence instead of simply opinion. Overall, there may not need a separate conclusion section. The third prong is already the summary prong. So far, this is what we discussed about the three individual prompts under matter of the NASA for specific and detailed requirements for NIW. As we know, there are advantages of an IW application. It does not require a final merits determination section, so it's not a two-step like the Kazarian case for EB1. And there is no specific requirements on the applicant's degree or total number of publications, total number of citations to your works your major field of study, or past specific achievements or accomplishments, or where are you currently physically located, either inside the U.S. or abroad, or how old are you? Do you already have a job, already have a permanent position in the U.S.? These are not specifically required for NIW, so there are more flexibility. You can grasp the opportunity from this video and our other videos on the YouTube channel get better understanding of NIW and the overall green card application process. If you have additional questions, you can contact us. Thank you.